Hello everyone, this is Ethan Dragon, and welcome back to another episode of Fire Emblem Heroes. So, here we are, not in Vault of Heaven, facing some decently merged teams here. We have a few plus 10 units here. The most notable one, noble, notable one being this near save Raphael. Uh, near save, of course, makes sense against Regan. There's, I've run into a few near save Brave Hectors already, so... It's definitely a thing, especially when Regan's around. Definitely useful. But we're actually, speaking of near save, we're going to be uh, going for a turn one play here where we snipe down Raphael and leave and try to induce rally <laughs> chaos on the enemy so we get a turn two of nuking more units kind of a deal. We're just going to be hyper offensive is basically the plan. So here's the deal. <laughs> I don't actually, first things first, let's uh, calc to see if Raphael actually can get one round killed by Regan. We have attack tactic here, and Regan's kit gives 18, so that's 24 attack for 78. Spendthrift drops it down to 71. And then, okay, at 71 attack, Raphael's going to have, looks like, 37 res. So, that's 37 res rate. Wings of Light does not do anything there. Nothing else will have procced. Okay, seems good. And then we have the 15 from Senior Shell, so that's 49. And then we have the 71 attack against uh, 49, I want to say, because of low speed defense. So, wait. <laughs> 49, 71, is 22 damage, so we do 71 damage to <laughs> 100% not rigged. Uh, yeah, at least doesn't proc Deadeye on the counter. Pretty sure with 82 attack, he can't actually kill us in one shot. Uh, yeah, we got our damage reduction. So we're chilling there, 82 attack against 38 is uh, 44. So yeah, we do, we do take a lot. So we actually do get into Wings of Mercy range. So we actually do have some, somewhat of an option for who we want to dance with. We could dance with Plumeria or we could dance with Race and we'll have to choose when we get there. But uh, yeah, the plan, we're gonna break here with Veronica, break here with Krom, smite up with Altina, Regan's here, initiate here, leave here, and then we can choose to use either you or you to dance, and then that means Regan gets plopped here. Then with the remaining dancer, we dance Krom. And then Krom uses to change fate. He can break this if he wants to. Uh, so, here's the catch. <laughs> I don't, don't exactly know, first of all, who's actually going to use their rally up first. Because of course, the purpose of having Brave Veronica here is to induce those rallies to to create chaos. If Lara Shell rallies first, she rallies from here. And then the thing is, because of that, Regan's here, dual lift goes here. Uh, right, so Lara Shell goes here first. Dorothea has priority over dual lift because she's further away from enemies, so she'll dance. <laughs> and then, you know, uh, we'll see a rally here, a dance here, and he snipes down someone. So we're probably losing at least one unit if anything goes terribly. If um, dual lift rallies first, he'll probably rally from here. That would make the most sense. And then because of that, Either Lara Shell rallies here or rallies in place, I actually have no idea. <laughs> uh, so that's 10 out of 10 content right there. At least when Duelof rallies here, he'll get danced by Dorothea. And he can't reach anyone from this spot, which is fine for us. Just that uh, Lara Shell, I don't actually know how rally ups work off the top of my head right now. I should probably go review that. It's a bit more complicated than normal rallies. Uh, I feel like it's going to be the worst, the worst case scenario for us where sh the rally happens here. So in our current positions, Lara Shell is further away from everyone. 
then dual lift is if Krom's here. I I'm pretty sure I, I need to go refresh on this too that the distance to closest enemy tiebreaker thing only counts like the actual distance including the obstacles. I could be wrong and I should probably review that because I use that quite a bit. <laughs> So if Lara Shell rallies first, she probably rallies. She either rallies in place, which is fine for us, or rallies here. If re she rallies here, um, we could leave Krom here to bait out, but then it just causes a bamboozle of attacks onto him, and I'm pretty certain he cannot survive these attacks, especially after Doom is seven chip damage, and he has attack speed push four for the extra five chip. Pretty certain he can't survive an attack from Lara Shell and Duel. Like, if we, we can even check here real quick uh, 65, 71, 74. Uh, so that drops down to 65. And then Krom's res gets dropped by 8, <laughs> at least. 23. <laughs> so he takes 33, you know, it's 38, 45 overall from doing. So he's left at 17 HP, uh, dual lift. Let's pretend he's in range three spaces of an ally, which is pretty reasonable, honestly. Uh, 53 attack against Krom or something like that. I might be missing something, but yeah, that's just death. <laughs> I know we have like Plumeria to buff like plus three, but let's be real. Six X saving six health isn't going to save us, I don't think, unless I did my mental map wrong. So let's go for it here, and then it's gonna be awkward when we actually miss the kill on Raphael. <laughs> uh, we can decide who we want to dance Krom with, or Regan and Krom with later. For now, we gotta do our meme shenanigans. All right, there's uh. Everything calced out correctly. So we obviously move back here. And now it's a question of who do we want to dance with? Hmm. I feel like we probably want to dance with Rayson. Because Regan probably would like the extra attack. Seems okay. Krom can get attack via to change fate. So I'm less concerned about that. Krom staying here, is that bad? On second thought, maybe it's an okay idea to leave Krom. Well, if we leave Krom here, then lift, we can guarantee lift rallies first, actually. Is that good for us? Rally here, and then it, hmm. That's actually an interesting thought. Uh, if Lara Shell gets rallies here, it's, we, we drop Veronica already, so we might, I don't think we drop Krom. Does she take out Rayson? Let's see. She's got 47, 53, 56. Uh, it's actually kind of close. 56. Wait, 53. <laughs> I'm confusing myself. Uh, 53, 50. I think they might be tied on speed. So it's a matter of who Bright Shrine procs on. Krom's got, I think it's just on Krom, 123. I don't think anyone can be 123. Yeah. Okay. So then, um, in the variation of Lara Shell rallies here, you know, Dual Lift will probably take the defense tile because it's the defense tile. So we probably don't want Plumeria in potential range of that. So maybe we just put her, break this with Plumeria or we could break this. We have Wings of Mercy. So we can fling our units if necessary, but I, I feel like this is probably better. Or maybe this we can use to change fate. I, I don't think it's worth using to change fate that way. Uh, let's go here. Wait, three, wait, that's six. We're just tied with Lara Shell. I don't know what the next tiebreaker is <laughs> off the top of my head. Maybe we put Plumeri in the corner. Let's, let's screw ourselves over by doing this. Well, let's see what happens here. Dual lift does rally first, as I expected. Okay, that was expected. Marshall does rally in place. That was my expectation. Now, can I tell you why I thought that? Um, not really. <laughs> it's this. 
There's um on Verve's AI guide, there's like three types of allies you divide the categories in. There's like eligible, intended, and something else. <laughs> and Mirrorbliss is the only one uh, that's being threatened like Veronica. So I felt well. So my thought was that Mirrorbliss was the only eligible target with priority. But, you know, we're, we're past that now. We gotta deal with everyone here. So, we can do this. We got Kanto, since it's turn one. We also have Wings of Mercy, real quick. So, we can probably just have a triple kill with Krom. Or, actually, double kill. We can probably triple kill. Yeah, we can triple kill. Wait, can we? I have to use Kanto correctly. Yeah, because, uh... I guess a blade session, we can actually pick up the kill and do a lift. So maybe we quadruple kill these guys? Uh, we could... Be because then at that point, Regan is... I guess we could use to change fate, but then... Veronica's in the way. <laughs> this is complicated. More complicated than I feel like it should be. Um... So if we have Altina just, like... End turn. Then Veronica can pick up the kill on dual lift. And then we can <laughs> dance with Racing? Question mark, question mark, question. It seems very odd. I think then that comes down to can Veronica take out Dorothea? Let's calc that. So, Veronica is going to have at least a nice amount of tech. Alright. Doroth, so that drops down to 65. We do double. Right? Yeah. Dorothea drops down to 28 from Veronica. So he's got 36. So we need 6. Yeah, we can pick up the one. Also, we debuff if we scalp. I forgot about that as well. So, that seems like an okay play. Let's do it. Because we got Krom and Wings back up. Uh, I'm just checking here to see what exactly we want to do here. I know we want to do this. Oh, but if we dance with Racing, then we can't... Well, we can Kanto to where Krom was. Okay. <laughs> this is getting more and more confusing the more we're looking at it. Uh... Okay, there's that kill. There's this kill. There's, here's this kill. Wings in. Take out Duma. And it's GG at this point. Now we can just flex Kappa. <laughs> uh, time to flex by trying to pick up all the structure. Break all the structures. How fun. Uh, let's start by going this way. Can use Wings of Mercy to our advantage. Who do you want to pick up the kill? Probably just Plumeria is fine. Alright. And GG. Alright, not too bad, but yeah, I think what did it for me was choosing to put... I don't know what the next tiebreaker is, relevant tiebreaker is after just... Distance from closest enemy <laughs> for who gets to use their assist first. Uh, I think it's a good thing we just made sure that it was going to be Duelist first because he wasn't going to be a threat uh, to us after those shenanigans. But yeah, that, that's a pretty decent match. We'll definitely have to refresh on that AI stuff because... You do not see, uh, like from my experience, I, I do not see t double rally ups <laughs> on two calves, uh, range calves for that matter, in Ether Raid's defense. That is super rare. I'll see like one, but that team had three rallies. I feel like that's too many rallies, but that's my opinion. But uh, it's a turn, it was a turn one. Oh, there's, there's an update apparently. <laughs> Uh, well, 
we're not going to uh, stick around for the update for this video. So that's going to be it for this episode. Uh, thanks for watching. As always, this is Ether Dragon, and hope to see you all next time. Bye!